great. Well, this one is, it's going to be about, you know, taking a client from just being a client in your database all the way to, to closed and kind of that whole process and that whole cycle. So um, this is the sales cycle. So we're going to talk about the seven steps in the sales cycle, which is kind of the same for all types of sales. If you guys were with me on Wednesday when we did the training about communication, you'll kind of hear me say a lot of the same things that I was saying in that training because a lot of sales is communication. And then um, has anybody here ever done the DISC assessment that it's mentioning here, the DISC assessment? Catherine, did you do that through one uh, you? Yeah, they sent it to me and so I did it. Yeah. yeah. Was it um, interesting, eye-opening? It, it kind of evaluates your, your communication style and how you like to be communicated with and how you communicate with others. I like to be very planned and organized and step-by-step which Thanks. you've probably seen in me, like, I need to know all the steps and what I need to do. Yeah. And I need to follow all the steps and kind of detail because that's kind of how you I like get the information and process it. And that. so mm -hmm. very much like that, like the mm -hmm. planner organizer, that kind of thing. Right. But I, in a, sure. Yeah. More uh, introverted and really, but then when I become in a group, I become more extroverted but I really mm -hmm. am more introverted. So it was, it was kind of interesting. I kind of knew it, but I didn't think it would show up so strongly on a profile like that. Hmm. Okay. And and once you take this assessment, there's a whole uh, list of, of items that it, it kind of guides you like better ways to use your, your styles in the workplace with other people. It, it gives you like, I think it was like 30 pages long um, details about, you know, so I, I encourage everybody to do that. It's uh, if you go in your one login, you go to one you and you just search disc assessment, it takes you to a website where you can complete the assessment. So it's pretty neat. Um, I guess in RevUp, we have an affirmation every day. Uh, this today's affirmation is I love to set appointments and I love to make presentations. So <laughs> I don't know if everybody can agree with that affirmation or not, uh, but it is, you know, kind of a big part of what we do. Um, if you're not setting appointments, then, you know, you're not signing paperwork, you're not signing clients, you're not signing buyers or listings. So, you know, you have to kind of get comfortable with with that. And And most of us being in this business are pretty comfortable talking with people. So. I think maybe making appointments one-on-one -on -one is more comfortable than doing presentations at this point, but it is kind of what you're doing, a mini presentation for people. Okay, so we're gonna just briefly go over these seven steps, then we're gonna talk about all of them more in detail. Uh, number one is prospecting for leads, uh, circles of opportunity. So, Kind of, you know, just going back to looking at everything around us as being an opportunity to capture a lead, uh, be it people that we interact with on a daily basis, friends, family, you know, that sphere of influence, uh, people that I talked about this in one of the trainings that that do services for you. Like, think of them as opportunities for leads as well. Your, your hair person, your nail person, your mechanic, you know. They're you're in, you're hiring them to do work for you. Why can't they hire you to do something for them as well? So uh, that's the first step, of course, is just building a book of. And number two is, is make appointments with those prospects and building rapport. I probably said that word too many times in my training the other time the other day about talking with difficult people. The key to sales is, is building a relationship with people and making them feel comfortable and that is rapport. Uh, next is gonna be qualifying and needs analysis. So it's going to help you have that consultation with a buyer or seller and really asking the appropriate questions to make sure that you're meeting the needs that they have. And it's basically like a worksheet. 
looks like a buyer consultation worksheet, a seller consultation worksheet. And it makes sure that you don't miss any of the important questions that you may just have a, a, a casual conversation with them, but you might miss asking them really important stuff like, do they need to have a garage in their house? You know, what size property are they envisioning themselves living on? So these kind of things that you might skip if you have this worksheet, it, it makes sure that you've got all of the questions answered. Um, loyalty commitment representation. Um, this is just kind of, you know, explaining to your clients that, and we go back to that working with real estate agents form that we have. And this might be a good time to present that form um, during, of course, your first consultation with them is that what you are providing as an agent to them is your loyalty and commitment. You are, they are hiring you to be loyal to them, to have their best interests in mind. Um, and that's actually a really good time to introduce that form, I think. Um, okay, number five is meeting the needs. So delivering that loyalty, um, acting on your job as agent, showing the properties, finding the properties, marketing the home if it's if it's a listing. Um, and then after we get that house under contract, it's the contract to close, closing the transaction. So this is the part of the, our sales cycle where you're really going to prove to your clients how you are earning your money <laughs> because this is where things can tend to get more difficult. You have to have a lot of problem solving skills and you have to show them, you know, why we are paid what we're paid and why they need us in this um, life transition that we're consulting them through. This is where you, you earn your money. Um, and then number seven is the post-sale follow-up, which is something that a lot of salespeople forget to do. Um, which is just <clears throat> keeping in contact, you know, circling back, reminding them that you're still here for anything that they need and, you know, scheduling those reminders yourself so that you don't forget to keep in touch with your past clients and also asking for referrals and reviews. Um, and I'm sure you guys have talked a little bit <clears throat> in Rev Up about prospecting for leads and where you can find how you can find these leads. And this little graphic here kind of shows you all the, the ways that you can find leads. Um, you know, farming. It, it used to be a more popular thing than it is now, but it's still in the neighborhood. There's uh, also door knocking can be part of that. And I think we, uh, uh, in this day and age, just have to be a little careful the we're knocking time so door knocking but I do know that there are some stuff that do have be I think we lost Allison was anybody else having trouble hearing her or was that just, okay. Yeah, yes. they got, oh, there she oh, is. <laughs> hey, Allison, you're on mute. Oh, this is frustrating. Hotel internet, okay. Did you guys hear anything I just said about all of that? Oh, uh, prospecting. I think we missed like the last couple. Did you hear me or I don't know when I cut out? Mm, we went through a bunch of them, but probably the last minute. Okay. I don't know. Sorry. I used my hotspot instead of the hotel Wi-Fi and it's better. I don't know if you want to try your hotspot or not. 
on my phone you think maybe? Yeah. well my son's into technology and he's when we travel he's like just use the hotspot on your phone it's better than the hotel wi-fi and i don't know if that's true in general but i turned it on for me and it worked and my mac connected without any problem so that's what i did <laughs> If she does that, she might have to come back, go out and come back. I can hear you, Catherine. Okay. I just got to find my PowerPoint again that I was sharing with you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hang on here with me. Your curtains are pretty in the back. So you can still see me? Yeah. Okay. Can everybody else see me? Yep, I can see you too. Okay. And can you see my screen? No. No. <clears throat> no. Okay. Escape out of that. Go back to Zoom. Share my screen. We're almost there. Okay, share this. Okay. Is that good? Yes. Better? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm on my phone now. We'll see how this does. If it doesn't work, I apologize in advance. <laughs> oh, well, no, that's a good suggestion. I don't know why this hotel has such terrible Wi-Fi. Plus, um, my children are here using the Wi-Fi as well, so it might be, that, that may is. be the issue as well. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I couldn't even get on our hotel Wi-Fi with the Mac, and I don't know why. And it happened last time I traveled. I don't know why, but anyway. Uh, okay. Well, we were talking about all the places that you could find um, leads. How's everybody been doing with, you know, building up their CRM, entering their their contacts? Has everybody been having some success with that? Finding people in unusual places that you didn't think you'd be adding to your CRM? I'm still adding from my contacts, from my phone, Facebook, you know, um, mm -hmm. anybody that I have been, you know, like you said, you know, doing business with, you know, just putting mm -hmm. their information mm -hmm. in there and uh, doing the the drip campaigns for like holidays, you know, um, birthdays, you know, just starting with stuff like oh. that. Good. Yeah. So setting people up on the drip campaigns. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing that through OneSuite? Are you guys all using OneSuite? Yeah. Yeah, and um, one suite's a great great tool. I know other agents, you know, if they've been in the business before or they're just comfortable with another, uh, you know, contact management system. Some people use other ones. You know, it's whatever works for you. Um, <clears throat> but I think if we're all using one suite, that's pretty awesome. Catherine, you you've been in the business before. Did you have a system like that in your prior real estate life, or girl? This is also new to me. Before I sold new homes and then I moved into the neighborhood where I sold the new homes with a builder and then I mm -hmm. worked for Cole Banker and so it was all referrals from all those people. So I farmed that. Yeah. I just farmed that whole neighborhood. And so I had a hundred people that thought I was, you know, at least okay and would refer. So mine was all referrals. So I'm trying, I live in a neighborhood of about a hundred right now and um, they all know I used to do real estate. So I'm going to try back to talk to them. So I'm kind of just creating some value with referring <clears throat> trades and plumbers and things like that mm -hmm. our tax guy wh whatever and just in the circle of influence is probably more mine so I I've uploaded my contacts but I haven't set up a drip campaign yet so I have to figure out how to do that and I want my emails to go out just as an email like I asked Brian does it go out as an attachment with your drip is it an attachment they have to click on or does mm -hmm. it just come up as an email that they see because I don't want to have to yeah. click. I just want them to see something pop right. up right. about you no the way those drip campaigns work is it, it it pops up as like a nice looking email yeah they're not clicking on anything and it's already all yeah. formatted for you and it looks nice and branded real t1 and everything like that so they are pretty slick looking um, you know, and it does maybe you can watch like a tutorial on how to assign email those campaigns to your contacts, but 
you know, there's definitely one of those in one you that you can watch or on one suite. <clears throat> but yeah, so definitely, you know, you can do holidays if you just want to sign people up for holidays. Or, but there's special campaigns for buyers and, and seller leads if you want to get into the campaigns and add those. Yeah, yeah. It's not a good I idea. know Brian said he was going to send us the, um, I think it was Logan's last market update because I wanted to send that to everyone just to market update every month. Mm hmm. So okay. Just somehow um, cut and cut and paste whatever he oh, did. The, into that. the newsletter. I guess so. You're talking about the newsletter. Maybe whatever the mark. Would that be good? Just to send that you know that information out to people every month. Yeah, I mean a newsletter is a great touch every month. Uh, I we don't call it a market update. We call it a newsletter, but it does okay. have a component of it that is a market update in there, and okay. and we make those every month, and they're listed in one suite underneath uh agent uh i think it's campaign letters okay. i can show you how to do this catherine but okay. you can go in there and take the one that we uh created mm -hmm. and then you can just you have to change your picture and stuff because it has our picture on it mm -hmm. um and like our information but you just have to change some things about it and then you can send it out Oh, perfect. I but we can, it. we can talk about doing that later. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So step two is making appointments, you know, getting face to face with people. And, you know, I don't necessarily agree so much with the way this is stated to only meet with people that you think are ready to buy or sell in the next 30 days. Um, I think it's good to meet with people whenever you can. Uh, it, if it's just coffee with a friend or, you know, stopping by somebody's house because they have a question about making a, a change to their kitchens, bathrooms, whatever it is, you know, somebody that says they're not ready to buy or sell today, if you could get in front of them and really have a conversation about things, they may change to a, a person that's ready to buy or sell immediately if they could have a consultation with you and, and understand, like, for example, a, a seller you can meet with them and really help them understand the value of their home in today's current market, which they may not really understand until you have that meeting. And then, then they're ready to sell, you know? So I, I think whether you think they're an A or A plus person at this point, it's always good to meet with people and stay in front of them. If, if they're willing to, to give you the time, I would suggest that for sure. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so make, so qualifying and needs analysis. So this is where that, that um, form that I was going to email you guys comes in to play where you can, when you're having a meeting with somebody, it just helps you to take, take detailed notes about what you're discussing with them, you know, what they actually want and need in their new house or how you're going to help them be successful in selling their current house and get to where they need to be. Um, they don't really feel out the questionnaire you talk to them and, and you can fill out the questionnaire for your you know personal files um so yeah i'll send that to everybody so that you can have a copy and of course agents make up their own versions of this you know you may want to ask people a question that i may ne not necessarily feel that i need to ask so feel free to make it your own uh you can just type up your own seller questionnaire buyer questionnaire initial meeting kind of format Okay, so re remember that, you know, loyalty. So this is the part where we're really like building rapport with a client. Um, we're really helping them feel comfortable with us and what it is that we're doing uh, to help them get to the next step. So that kind of goes both ways. You, you want to make sure that, you know, your clients are, and by asking a lot of questions and listening to them, you can make sure that they're going to be a good client for you as well. I know when you're getting started in real estate, you know, you never want to think, oh, um, I don't want to work with this person. Like, you always know, like, I have to work with everybody um, no matter what. But this is kind of part of the process where you can decide, you know, me and this person might not be a good fit if they're an unreasonable person, if they're not, if everything you say, they're 
they're objecting to everything you say that you, you can kind of tell these days, I feel like if somebody's going to be easy to work with or very extremely difficult to work with. And, you know, life's too short, I think, to stress and worry about a client that's going to be not a good fit for you. So this is kind of the time in the process where you can try to figure that out, get ahead of it before it becomes a real stressful problem, you know, that you're worrying about, thinking about, stressing about all the time. You got to kind of qualify your your clients. And, and, and this is when you can spend the time asking a lot of questions and listening to them, you can kind of decide that. But but 95% of the time, most people are going to, you're going to be able to, to work something out with them. Uh, but never be afraid to, to not fire a, a client, but explain to them, you know, maybe I, I don't know if we're the best fit. Um, I, I have an agent I'd love to refer you to. Don't, you can still get that referral business. If, if this is a person that you don't think you're going to work well with, don't forget about the referral business, 25%. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to deal with that person. <laughs> so, you know, definitely consider that. Um, and, and help people understand that having an agent is always in their best interest. You know, I mean, what we do, as I explained the other day, is we're really consultants for people in in a big decision that people don't make every day. Because uh, we're in this business, we think about it all the time. We, we're used to it. We're used to the questions. We're used to the process. But if you really think about most people, they're not buying or selling a house maybe but every four to seven years. You know, that's kind of the general time frame that people go through this process. And it changes so much every four to seven years. So you kind of have to put yourself in their place that they are not not used to this process, but you are. So that kind of helps them feel more comfortable when you are explaining that you do this on a daily basis. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to go smoothly because this is what I do for a living. You know, and that's they do not. Um, they're not used to this process and they could feel nervous and scared. But just remind them, you know, well, I am used to this process and I I know, you know, how things are going to go and just make people feel comfortable with that. OK, and again, this goes this is kind of a continuation of meeting their needs and how you're going to do that, uh, understanding their needs and communication is that word that I say all the time. People need to be communicated with a lot more than you think they do. Uh, you know, again, because we do this every day, we sometimes assume that people know what's going on, but they really don't. <laughs> you, you have to overly communicate with people about this process and what to expect next. Ne you know, never feel like you're, you're telling them too much. I think people would rather would rather you be sending them too many texts or too many emails or calling them too much rather than them not hearing from you at all. That's the number one complaint that people have with real estate agents. Well, we signed the contract and I barely ever heard from them again. Like they didn't keep me up to date. So please communication is number one in meeting your client's needs. Hmm. So this is just kind of like a script. We talked a lot about scripts the other day in the training I did. Um, even if you really don't have anything to say, <laughs> just kind of reaching out and be like, hey, just wanted to let you know, not really any updates today. Everything's going pretty smoothly right now. And I will let you know if there's anything new to report. That can just be a text, an email. You can leave a voicemail. Even no news is, is actually no news is usually good news. <laughs> Um, so yeah, just another way to kind of keep in touch and communicate, even if there's not much to say. Allison, would okay, you so close every day. If you have one under contract, would you just send a text every day to say, Hey, this is what's going on today. We're, you know, status quo, mm -hmm. just a little something every morning, just to make them feel, you know, would you do that every day? Yeah. Um, I, I don't do it every day. Um, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to maybe like an every other day check in. I, I think at least every other day, there might be some more information to communicate to them, like a, basically an update on showings, if it's a listing, 
Uh, if you have a buyer, you know, you might be able to update them something about, oh, we're waiting on the, we're still waiting on the inspection report to come back, you know, no news yet on that, or we're waiting for a response from the sellers on our repair request. I think you might have more content if you, if you switch to maybe every other day. Uh, but every day you may not, you may just be saying that same thing, like, well, nothing new today, but just let you know I'm here if you have any questions. <clears throat> so that might, it might depend on, you know, you, maybe it's just easier for you to remember to do that every day rather than skipping days. But again, I don't think it would annoy them. You know, they just don't, they don't have to feel a need to reply to it. Uh, just, especially if you're just saying like, nothing new to report today. Just want to let you know I'm here if you have any questions. And on your I don't do it every day, but, but you could. Right. You could, I guess, set expectations, like on your initial presentation, mm -hmm. I'm going to update you every day or every other day, whatever you decide to do, but just set their expectations of what to expect. So they know, so they're confident in right. it and, and what you're, whatever Ex you're doing. Yeah, exactly. A lot of this has to do with the initial presentation that you're giving and the questions that you're asking, you know, letting them know how much you plan on communicating with them and finding out what their best form of communication is. You know, some people like to be like to text like they don't really want to talk on the phone some people are more like they like the emails because they can keep those more organized you know put them in a file folder or whatever and, and you'll see a lot with like older people they like to talk on the phone so you know you can kind of that can be one of the questions on your questionnaire what's my what's your preferred form of communication with me and um you can like fill that out and keep that in your file and know okay this client I got to text them. That's the way they like to talk. So these days it is a lot of texting, but it is harder to organize to text than it is emails. And you can't quite impart so much information in a text as you can an email. So <clears throat> yes, definitely, Catherine, that's a good um, conversation to have up front. And okay, this is, so the one that I said a lot of people forget to do is after you've been through this whole process, you know, you've earned your money, you've, you've problem solved, you've put out fires, you've, you've helped them understand the whole process and you've gotten to closing. You know, don't forget to follow up after closing and do two things. You've got to ask your client to give you referrals because if you don't ask, they may not know that you want referrals, right? I was talking to a, uh, Logan the other day who you know he's been in the business a long time and uh he's starting to have the issue where <clears throat> his client his clients think that you know and when you've been in this business a long time your clients might start to think oh well Allison's so busy or Logan's so busy they don't really need my business anymore you know they have they're too busy they have enough business that's certainly not true for me um and I don't think it's true for <laughs> Logan either but if you don't r routinely ask your past clients that you would like them to send you business, they, they don't know that you want it. So always find for ways to ask for the referrals of their friends and family. Anybody they hear talk about real estate, you want that client to insert your name into the conversation. And this is also just a good way to keep in touch with past clients to remind them, you know, maybe every six months, you know, you can give them a call, send them a text, email, take them to coffee, you know, just a reminder, my, the core of my business is, is referrals from satisfied past clients. And I would be honored if you would, you know, use my name when you hear friends or family talking about a real estate need. So don't forget to ask people for that. And the other thing to ask for is a review. Um, you know, a lot of people these days do not do business without reading reviews about somebody or the business itself. And we have a, a really great um, platform called Rate My Agent. And we have that an affiliation with Realty One where you, you kind of get like the basic level of that platform for free. Um, so please go to Rate My Agent and set up your, your account so that when you have a closing, you can, you can kind of like, it can auto ask people for these reviews as soon as you close. Uh, and that's the best time to ask for the review. And then you can post it to your social media. You can include it in your newsletter, you know, however you'd like to use that review, it will appear online and people can search for it and see your good reviews. So don't forget to ask people for that. And then to include in your CRM, a reminder to follow up with these people, be it three months, you know, how did the move go? How did the renovations go? Just checking in on the things they planned on doing with the house. 
It could be six months, could be a year, the anniversary. Sometimes it's nice we you can mail them a car, like a little anniversary card, a year they've been living in their house. Um, that's also a nice touch. Handwritten cards are are pretty special still these days, I think. So, you know, don't be afraid to send those out. Uh, it, people really appreciate the time you take to do that. So, yeah, these are all things you can do after the sale. Just don't forget because the num one of the number one reasons why people don't use a real estate agent again is because they forget about them. They just don't know that, that you're still doing that job. <laughs> so don't let them forget about you because they will. You know, and just going back to building rapport with people, once you have rapport with people, they will trust you and they, they the, the whole transaction will go smoother if, you, if you're always, you know, um, just being friendly with people and asking them questions, not just real estate transaction, but their life. You know, if you show people that you care, you're building rapport, it's going to help your business and the whole transaction as a whole. Oh, this uh, says we were given, we were given um, one mouth and two ears and two eyes. So just reminding you that it's, it's generally more important to, to um, pay attention and to listen than it is to speak. And, you know, the more we speak sometimes, the more we can get ourselves into trouble. So it's just always good to listen to people's needs. It's twice as important, actually, than talking. And we talked a lot about objections that buyers and sellers have the other day uh, and scripts on how to deal with those objections. I don't know if anybody's looked into that. But again, on One You, you can search, I mean, lists and lists of scripts to deal with objections that the general objections that buyers have, sellers have, and just how you can kind of talk your way through those objections. I, I highly suggest you guys listen to some of those because through the throughout real estate, the objections that buyers and sellers have have generally been the same. So you can have the same responses to those objections. Uh, and usually what people are objecting to is not even really what their true concern is. And that's where the asking questions kind of gets to the root of what they're really concerned about. Is it money or, you know, giving the control of selling their house to somebody else, their, their largest asset? You know, is it just control? Is it money? What, what, is, what is the thing that they're really worried about? And you can usually figure that out by asking some more qualifying questions. You know, and, and always validating people's concerns, their objections, as I said the other day in training, you know, make them understand that you would have the same questions if you were on the other side of the table. I, I totally understand that concern about sales price or, you know, that concern about how am I going to market your property? Just make sure they know that you would be asking that same question. There's no such thing as a dumb question in real estate or a dumb objection. Uh, prior to my uh, career in real estate, I was a, a classroom teacher. So I taught first and second grade. And there's a lot of questions. <laughs> and um, I just always tell my clients, like, I'm used to questions. Please don't ever hesitate to ask me stuff, even if you think it's the dumbest question ever. Uh, always make sure they feel like it's okay to be open with you and ask you anything, because that's what you're here for make them feel comfortable in doing that. Um, this one's just kind of about like, you know, striking while the iron is hot, uh, turning those clients that you think might be six months from selling into one of those like A plus A clients that's gonna sell in 30 days. You know, having the appropriate conversations about the market with people when they're open to listening to it. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are on the fence right now about buying or selling because they're just so nervous about the status of the market, interest rates. <clears throat> if you come from a place of education instead of like selling them on selling their home, I mean, honestly, it really is a good time to sell a house, especially if you've been there for a while, you have equity in the home, you can use that equity to you know, move to the house you really want to be in. Maybe you wouldn't even have that much more of a payment because of the equity. You know, you just really have to ask questions and talk to people and educate them about why it's always a good idea 
to buy real estate. It's it's the best investment you can make. And, you know, just educate them on how the market, the way it is, whether they think it's good or bad, can help them in that endeavor. And always, uh, when you have these appointments, when you're setting appointments, bring the paperwork with you to close the deal. You know, if it's a buyer consultation, bring the the working with real estate agents and the the uh, the buyer contract. You can go ahead and get it signed that day, and don't forget to ask because if you don't, if they if you don't ask, they don't know to sign it first of all. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, they may be interviewing other brokers and what they, you know, thought about that night might change their mind. They might meet with another broker tomorrow and then they'll, that person asks and then they sign the paperwork. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask people to sign the paperwork because you can't start doing your job until they've signed on with you. The quicker that they do so, the quicker you can get to work for them. So, you know, don't forget to bring that with you. You can pre-populate it with most of the information. If it's a listing appointment, of course, you can put, you know, most of the information in there, the address, all the tax information. The only blanks you may have to leave on there are the sales price that you guys are going to decide on during that listing appointment. Maybe the expiration date, if that's a conversation you have to have with them, but, but most of it can be filled out. Uh, this one, I didn't really understand what you were supposed to do here. It was also a supplemental um, form that I can send you. I think it has something to do a little bit with the disc assessment. If, if you guys complete that, you'll kind of see where you fall on this, this cross here. Um, you can probably look at it and decide, um, you know, I'm a more informal person or I'm a more formal person. I'm structured, I'm unstructured. You know, this is all kind of like personality types and going back to that disc assessment. Yeah, so these are the four different kinds of personality types that you can fall into. Knowing your personality type and trying to discern what the personality type of your clients is will help you in talking with them and, you know, their, their communication styles. So this is just going through people's different communication styles. They like to hear it. They like to see it. You know, people need to touch it. <laughs> they need to go see the houses in person. Uh, oh, this is just a good habit to have, you know, really every, maybe you do this every day, maybe you do this every week. Obviously, the more that you do this, the better your, 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 your contact list is going to be, the more uh, interaction you're going to have with people. If you make three calls, you add three people to your CRM or you make three notes um, to yourself to follow up with somebody or send a note or something like that. The more you do this, the more interaction you're having with people, obviously, the more they're going to know you as a real estate professional and trust you and call you when the time comes. <clears throat> so that's all I have for today. Um, did anybody have anything they wanted to contribute or have any questions right now that they need answered or things going on with clients? that they wanted to talk about? Anybody have anything? Uh, Allison, I was just gonna ask you, um, in terms, I know on one of the slides you talked about meeting at the office, like it's professional and safety and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. But like a lot of my, you know, say buddies or people who live around here that know I'm a, a realtor now, you know, a, a lot of it's, you know, it's much more informal, like, hey man, I just wanna mm -hmm. talk about what you do. You know, I just wanna talk about yeah. what's going on. I just wanna talk about the steps. like. Mm -hmm. more informal and I almost fear and maybe wrongfully like trying to make it more professional like I'm trying to kind of mirror and match what they're giving me like do you think it's okay to meet that person for coffee or just go on a walk and talk like if they're a buddy right it's not like somebody's calling me kind of off the street I'm like hey let's go walk at the park yeah. and talk like a mm -hmm. buddy who's hey I just want to know is that okay like you know to just have mm -hmm. that conversation and just keep it casual and then at the end of that conversation hey man like sounds like you're more serious about buying or selling now like let's sit down in my office and because mm -hmm. obviously here I'm also where I live is 30 40 minutes away from the offices mm -hmm. and, and yeah. somebody's like hey I've only got 30 minutes or an hour you know just and then you know maybe at the end saying hey let's let's really sit down and have a conversation like I want to get you some information like help you along the way like then make it more of a professional mm -hmm. setting do you mm -hmm. think that's like an okay strategy to use with 
you know, maybe people that are like my age, you know, instead of dragging yeah. them straight to the office first off. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Um, and that's exactly what we're talking about, like meeting people where they're at, like understanding their communication style and what makes them feel comfortable. Cause we, you know, we always want to make people feel comfortable. Uh, a, a young guy like yourself might not feel comfortable coming into a real estate office they've never been to in a part of town that they don't live in. So um, I totally agree with you that, that having like a casual beer or coffee or, you know, walk around the freedom park lake or whatever, that these are much more informal conversations that are going to make them feel more comfortable and you know, the people already. So that's the perfect way to handle that. Like, let's just me, I just want to tell you about what I'm doing. Um, you know, and then kind of from there, you, you obviously asked a lot of questions and you've learned where they are in the process. If they're at all in the process, maybe you can guide them to be in the buying process because you're going to help make it easier for them. I kind of usually after that meeting, um, what I do is I take the things we talked about and I, I set them, I just go ahead and set them up on a search, you know, just kind of the houses and the price range that we were, if we did get to that point in the conversation, I just kind of slip that into the email inbox so they know, hey, Allison was thinking about me. She she took what we talked about. She set up a search and I'm getting houses that kind of meet those things we talked about. That's what I typically do after that initial conversation. And, and yeah, mine's pretty informal like that as well. I, I know for safety, you know, they say, well, you should, if it's somebody you've never met before and you don't know anything about this person, uh, I, I don't, you know, I would obviously, in my case, I would probably meet that person with another agent. You know, like I would ask Andrea to come to this meeting with me or, Catherine or you know maybe a mentee that could learn from the meeting as well um if it's somebody you don't know at all that's the safest thing to do but if it's somebody you feel comfortable with and you've had beers with before and you've had lunch and dinner with before just make it like any other fun outing yeah, yeah. I've, I've just I've felt like recently like I've been talking to Max who's my mentor and he says like one of the most important skills especially when you're getting started is that whole like mirror and match the energy that they're giving you like I had a conversation with my barber, for example, he's a little bit more stern and professional. So I kept it that way and told him like, Hey, if you're serious, like, you know, let, let's, let's have this conversation. He's like, let's do it. Okay. We move forward that way. And then, mm -hmm. you know, a few friends this weekend who are much more calm, a little more fearful, like, Hey, you know, I, I understand it's a big decision. Like you're saying, mm -hmm. like validating what they're feeling. And then, you know, I told them, Hey, man, like just send me over your email. I can get you a little more you know, information, send yeah. you some houses you might be interested in. They're like, well, we're not so sure. And I'm like, okay, you know, I eased off and then I'll come back to them a day or yeah. two later, like just trying to make sure I'm like <clears throat> cognizant of how people mm -hmm. are feeling. I just realized with people my age, like it's so much fear involved and I have to just kind of be super soft and, you know, hey, that yeah. I get it. I understand. Trust me. I live in an apartment too. You know, I, mm -hmm. I understand. That's why I got into this to help people like us. And then they kind of soften up and then yeah. just take it, taking your time, working it in. Exactly. Meeting and matching their energy. That's perfect. And that's how you build rapport. And I mean, another thing you can do, you know, if you have that conversation and they kind of tell you, well, I'd love this. I'd love that. I'd love to be here. Um, you know, go like look online and see if there's a property that kind of lines up with what they were talking about and just pretend you were going there for some other reason. Like, oh, I'm previewing this for, you know, a client that I'm working with, but it kind of also sounded like what you'd like to be in. You can meet me there if you want to, because I'm not actually meeting that client. I'm doing like a video for them. So if you just want to come check out these house, this house, it's kind of fun to just look at houses. Maybe that's your next meeting, just like a fun tour of a house, no commitment, you know, just, Hey, I'm happy to be at this house. It was kind of what you said you liked. That's, you know, could be fun for some, you could probably get a few friends to be down for that, especially if it's near where they live and it's not a big deal, you know? Um, but yeah, that's great advice from Max as far as just kind of copy their energy and, and, and follow, follow along with it that way. Yeah, that's a great, a great contribution. Anybody else having any questions or troubles right now? Everybody needs to get on with their Monday. <laughs> well, I'm glad we had so many on here today. Um, Thank you for uh, my technical difficulties allowing me to work through this. I obviously don't teach this on a day on a weekly basis, so 
it's good to see you guys and uh, yeah i'm gonna send you those the questionnaire materials to all y'all's emails um and then also if, if you want to take that disc assessment i think it's a really fun thing to do and very interesting go to your one you and just search disk assessment and it takes you to a website where you can complete it and then it just sends the it, it takes maybe like eight minutes to answer the questions i mean it's a super you're just answering questions or moving you're moving like terms around based on like you highly agree with this or you do not agree with this and it takes like eight minutes and it's pretty cool so i suggest trying that out and brian should be back next week um, but if you guys need anything in the meantime, uh, you'll have my email address once I send this to you. Catherine, we can get together about that newsletter thing at some point, okay? Okay. All right. Thank well, thanks, so everybody. Much. You're really yeah, good at the you. communication. Allison, thank oh, you. You're really good at just you. giving people time to pause, external communication. Just let them share. You don't have to answer <laughs> everything. You've given me a lot of good tips. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate that so much, Catherine. All right, guys, go out there and tell everybody you're a realtor today, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Allison. <laughs> All right, thank you so okay, much. Okay, looking Bye. forward to meeting you soon, Denise. You're yes, back I'm, here in South Carolina. You know what? I'm actually right by the office. I'm going to take a little tour. <laughs> oh, nice. Good. All right, wait, are you meeting Andrea there today? I'm, um, gosh, who am I meeting? Angela? No. Allison? No. no I'm Allison. I'm Allison. I think you're meeting Andrea. I'm sorry. There's Andrea. so many A's. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think oh, you need an Andrew. Walking out, so let me make sure that I add that I catch okay. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Everybody right, bye. have a great day. You too. Bye. -bye. <laughs>